Hi, welcome to PK's classes. Today we'll study neuromuscular blockers. So neuromuscular blockers. Before that, let us discuss the nicotinic receptors are of two types: nicotinic muscular and nicotinic neuronal. Nicotinic muscular is present in skeletal muscle, and uh, nicotinic neuronal is present in ganglion. So in ganglion stimulants and blockers class, we have discussed this receptor. And this nicotinic muscular receptor is also similar to that receptor. When acetylcholine binds, the, there will be influx of calcium, and there will be depolarization. Okay, and deep because of the depolarization, there will be skeletal muscle contraction. Okay, this leads to um, skeletal muscle contraction. So when we say nicotinic muscular receptor blockers nm receptor blocker then then there will be you know, blocking of the actions of acetylcholine and they can be skeletal muscle relaxants so uh, a blocker uh, so all these blockers can be divided into two groups non depolarizing blockers and depolarizing blockers and uh, i think you remember uh, in our last class nicotine nicotine produces initial depolarization followed by depression or depolarization block uh, when uh, it is uh, it shows its prolonged action similarly th this nicotine muscular receptor can also be blocked by using competitive antagonists so these non depolarizing blockers are the competitive antagonists of nicotinic muscular receptors okay whereas the depolarizing blockers are the agonist basically they are the agonist but produce problem agonists which uh, produce prolonged depolarization so because of prolonged depolarization there will be block of this receptor so the non depolarizing blockers like long acting uh, intermediate acting short acting they can be classified long acting neuromuscular blockers like uh, dtbocoretin pancuronium doxacurium pipecuronium intermediate acting neuromuscular blockers like bacuronium atracurium cisatracurium orocuronium rapacuronium short acting like mivacurium okay. and these depolarizing blockers are succinylcholine or succamethonium decamethonium okay they produce prolonged depolarization so if we uh, differentiate them then non depolarizing blockers are competitive antagonists at nicotinic muscular receptor depolarizing blockers are agonists at nm receptor but produce prolonged or persistent depolarization because of which they prevent the other impulses and indirectly they block and produce skeletal muscle relaxes and this can be reversed by anticholine steroid drugs anticholine steroid drugs they increase the level of acetylcholine so acetylcholine so it, since it is competitive antagonist so acetylcholine is the agonist and it can reverse the actions of these blockers whereas in this case there cannot be reversal again these depolarizing blockers like uh, succinylcholine succamethonium they can be hydrolyzed by pseudocholine esterases present in plasma whereas these are not hydrolyzed and because of initial depolarization followed by uh, um, depolarization block so there will be initial fasciculations or twitching followed by relaxation and there is uh, relaxation no fasciculation should be there in case of non depolarizing blockers and two major side effects of uh, uh, non depolarizing blockers are hypotension hypotension because of the uh, ganglion block okay and bronchospasm uh, because of histamine release because of histamine release by the uh, non depolarizing blockers and uh, the side effects of depolarizing blockers are bradycardia and malignant hyperthermia in, uh, increase intraocular pressure and potassium release in born or injured patients which can cause cardiac arrhythmia okay and this malignant hyperthermia is an inherited condition in which there is mutation in calcium release channels then only it will occur okay thank you